Are you tired of wasting time and money on expensive Polaroids that look better in the garbage than they do on your wall? Are you looking to take Polaroids that even your mom will love? Well, today you're in the right place because I'm going to show you my top five tips for taking better Polaroid photos. Hi, my name is Darren with Learn Film Photography and today I'm going to show you what I've learned after four years and over $2,000 spent on Polaroid film. Here are my tips that have personally allowed me to take photos that I am proud of, that my mom loves receiving, and that other people enjoy looking at. So these are the tips that you can start using today to take better Polaroid photos no matter which camera you're using. Tip number one is to always use the flash. Polaroid film loves light. So in order to take good portraits with Polaroid film, you need to use the flash. And the reason for it is simple. Polaroid film is extremely contrasty. That means if your subject is darker than the sky, your subject will not be visible in the image. As well, if there's any kind of harsh light, it's going to show all the wrinkles, all the pimples, and every imperfection in somebody's skin. So you want to avoid that as much as possible. And the way to do that is to use a flash, like the Mint Flash Bar 2, or the disposable General Electric flashes, or the built-in flash on your camera if you're lucky enough to have one. Once you start using flash, not only are you going to be able to get the background properly exposed as well as your subject, but you're also going to give the images that flattering glow that your clients, that your partners, that your mom, they're all going to love. The flash on Polaroid film is a little bit harsh, but it fills in all of the imperfections, and I mean all. I swear, the flash takes off five to 10 years on somebody's face, and that includes indoors, outdoors, in every situation. Always try to use the flash. Now, there are a few other ways that you can get perfectly even lighting with Polaroid film, and we're gonna get into those a little bit later. But now, let's get into tip number two, which is fill the frame. Now, the one unfailingly true fact about Polaroid film is that you cannot crop these images. There is nothing you can do to recompose the image after it has been developed. So that means that you have to get in there and fill the frame as much as possible. So images like this, they stand out because the frame was filled. And that's the same whether you're taking portraits of your friends and family, your dog, flowers, or even landscape photos. Always be sure to fill the frame to have the maximum impact in your photos. Cameras like the SX70 are actually super sharp. They can create some razor sharp images, but the way to do that is to get up close and use the close focusing distance of that camera. Other cameras like the One Step 2, the Now Plus, or the Polaroid Go all have limited close focusing distances. So be aware when you're using those cameras what the close focusing distance is so that you can create the sharpest possible images. Tip number three is to shoot with the sun behind you instead of in front of you. The reason for this comes back to the fact that Polaroid has very limited dynamic range. Dynamic range is the amount of detail that is captured in the shadows and the highlights of a single image. And on Polaroid film, you don't really have much room to work with at all. You, you get either the shadows or the highlights. I found that Polaroid film even struggles on cloudy days, so you have to really be careful when you're using this film. Unless you're shooting at a time like blue hour where the light is as even as possible. Always shoot with the sun behind you. That way the sun is gonna be lighting up your subject as well as the background with the same even lighting. And that's just gonna allow you to get the best exposure every single time. It's not gonna be perfect. Of course, there are differences in the amount of light that's in the sky, but it's gonna give you the best chance at getting a good image. Now, for example, here's two images that were taken at the same time. And as you can see, the images are radically different. Now, this one here, the camera was exposing for the clouds in the sky in the background, which meant that these binoculars here were underexposed. Whereas this one here, it exposed for the binoculars, and then now the sky is completely overexposed. But I still prefer the image on the left here, where there's more shadow detail because personally, the sky isn't as important. It was a really nice sunset sky. The clouds were beautiful but they're not what makes the image, it's the foreground. Of course, there are exceptions to this rule. For example, this shot here, where the camera captured the sky and the foreground was completely silhouetted. Now, in this case, it works out great because that was one of the most intense sunsets of my life and I'm super happy that Polaroid was able to capture it that way. But if the sunset wasn't as nice, then what was the point of that image? Well, one of the best pieces of advice is for landscape photographers is always to have a foreground subject. Because if you have a nice sky, that could be anywhere in the world. There's no sense of place in an image like that. I always prefer to expose for the shadows when it's possible, on, especially on Polaroid film when you have such limited range and potentially only one chance to get the shot. 
For those of you shooting landscapes, I highly recommend picking up a remote shutter button, specifically for Polaroid. And that just allows you to take an image without having to press the button on the front of the camera, which can introduce camera shake into your images. Now, tip number four is to store your film in the fridge. And the reason for it is because when Polaroid film is left out in the heat, it develops this reddish yellow orangey cast that's not all that nice on images. This one's still a nice shot, but it would have been much nicer had it been developed with a much more neutral cast. And the problem was because I had left it out in the Montreal heat for something like two or three months. So the film chemistry had already degraded and the film was guaranteed to come out this way anyways. Polaroid also recommends that you let the film develop in temperatures below 28 degrees Celsius or 82.4 Fahrenheit for those of you who like using this outmoded temperature scale. And the reason for that is because these same kind of color casts develop if the film has been developed when it's too hot. Some people will bring an ice pack in their Ninja Turtles lunchbox if they're living in some of the southern states where it's hot all the time, or places like Mexico and Spain and other hot regions of the world. Having an ice pack can be a really big factor that allows you to take good photos with Polaroid film, especially so if you're doing professional shoots or planning to sell these photos or exhibit them in the future. And tip number five is coming straight from your mom, and it's clean your damn rollers. One of the most preventable issues with Polaroids is if you get these lines in your image because the rollers were dirty. Polaroid cameras like the SX70 especially have, the, have exposed rollers that have a little bit more grit to them to help them pull the film out of the camera, but that roller will collect a lot of dust. Now Polaroid recommends that you clean your rollers every two to three packs of film, and how to do that is just to use a microfiber cloth and make it damp with warm water, and then just run those along the roller. Especially if you're going out and doing a portrait session or something where you're making once in a lifetime photos, always, always clean your rollers. That is the best way to ensure that you're going to come back with good images every time. Okay, and those are my top five tips for taking amazing Polaroid photos. Implement these tips today and you're gonna start coming home with more keepers. If you like this video and you like these tips, check out my blog, learnfilm.photography. I have tips just like these and more in an in-depth article on the blog, which you can find in the link below. Also, if you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel if you'd like to see more videos just like this one. Learn Film Photography is all about taking an eco-friendly and scientific approach to shooting and developing film. All right, thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.